<laughs> just getting a cord. Hi there. Sorry, I was just getting a cord for my thing. Hi there. Hey. Oh, hold on. I don't have your audio just yet. Let me see. That should be better. If, yes, I can hear you now. I just plug it in my computer. Don't mind me. have a fantastic setup. Uh, you're on a lazy Susan because I have a galley kitchen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's my first time giving this a try. Do you happen to have any lighting for Patrick? Let me see if you can. Get any brighter. working on it. <laughs> okay, no worries. We have time. We have time. Make sure not too tall. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's how effective it's going to be. She's going to go down and see if we can get a work light from downstairs. We weren't expecting overcast today. Oh, we, yeah, we had a lot of storms last night here and it, it got a little, it's sunnier now, but it's very, very hot, very humid. Yeah, we've had we had a big storm earlier and we thought it cleared up all the way, but we still got some clouds. So Oh wow. <laughs> but it's a gorgeous view. I mean so much nicer than my kitchen. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's why I wanted to do it out here just to see the view. So Oh definitely, yeah. The kitchen's not nearly as glamorous. <laughs> <laughs> But thanks so much for doing this and for being game. And I'm really excited for the recipe you've got for us. I hope I have all the like, all of the materials ready. I have, I'm close to my drawers just in case. Yeah, I mean, we should be okay. Not a whole lot of uh, cooking utensils. I mean, this is, this and a couple of spoons, a whisk, a pair of tongs and a fish stack. So. Oh, okay, yes, hold on. Let me make sure I have that on the ready. So I've got, yeah, fish spatula, the whisk. Let me get a whisk. Okay, yes. And what was the other one? Fish spatula, whisk, and? I, I like to use tongs when I plate, so. Yeah, tongs. There, here. Okay, perfect. I got it. Hi, Steve. So I'm many, keeping everyone's cameras kind of off and microphones off for the presentation. You can use the chat feature on the side. And I'll give that, that an overview when everyone pops on. Yeah. Just so it's not super distracting. We don't see, like, we have over 30 people, around 35 people registered so that we don't see 35 different kitchens. Gotcha. <laughs> cool. Okay. Just admitting people in. Oh, looks like everyone is quite on time. See, see the waiting room. 
Hi everyone. Just um, we're all waiting for everyone to pop on. Um, I'm just going to keep everyone muted and their cameras off for now, just so that we don't see a bunch of people's different kitchens and you know hear a bunch of clatter. Um, we'll mainly be focusing on Patrick, and I'll be kind of like the um, the modified version. Like if you're at a workout class, I'll be the modified version, <laughs> so that you feel like it's more attainable. Let's see, admit, hello everyone. Hello. So everything's gonna kick off at 6 p.m. Um, I'm just gonna give people time to come into the meeting. People are slowly trickling in. And you can enjoy the view of my kitchen and then the view of the Glenora Cellars winery, the view that they have there. I'm so jealous because <laughs> this, this is my view. <laughs> Ooh, my cat is drinking out of the food bowl in the corner. At least I have a like, kind of a nice sunroom to my left. <laughs> in the chat, everyone, um, you know, I'm, like I had mentioned before, but there's a few new people uh, as they're trickling in. Um, I'm just going to keep everyone on mute and cameras off so that the focus is more on Patrick and the instructions. And, you know, we'll be discussing uh, local ingredients throughout the Finger Lakes wine country, as well as awesome kitchen tips and tricks. I'm really excited. I know I'm going to learn a few things from this presentation. But yeah, like I had mentioned, uh, I'm just going to keep everyone's cameras off and mute for now. Um, at the end, I'll open it up to questions. I'll have a more formal um, introduction once we kick everything off. Okay, it's six o'clock, but I do want to give people just like maybe a minute or two um in the chat box though uh what are you drinking this evening it is past 5 p.m i've already busted open a bottle of wine i saw chardonnay on the <laughs> on the recipe list so i've already hit that um there you go. tell us what you're pairing with your meal this evening in the chat box Oops, getting more people Ooh, everyone popping in at the same time Dana Prophet, sticking with them. I found them, I found a New York Chardonnay. Oh, sticking with the theme, nice. Awesome. No meal yet, but Chardonnay. Let's see. Okay. We've got a good group coming in. I just want to give a few more moments um, yeah, definitely. Hi, Gio. Gio, by the way, was one of my guests on Check, Please on WHYY. He is a food blogger and a food personality as well in the Philadelphia region. So I feel honored to be among great company. But yeah, like I said, you can, you're just welcome to just watch or cook along oh yeah dana dana was on the show too she was she recommended nord um more fish yeah definitely into it um dana and geo y'all should like swap social media handles because one you're both food bloggers and influencers in philadelphia and two you were both on check please <laughs> oh it would have been fun to have you all on the same episode that would have been one heck of a conversation. Okay, it's 6.02. I'm gonna probably, I didn't realize I would have to hit admit to bringing people into the conversation as we go along, but since it's past six, we'll get started. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me and Patrick today for an awesome cooking class featuring local coho salmon, which is sustainably raised in the Finger Lakes region in upstate New York. Pardon me. <laughs> um, yeah, so 
Patrick is the executive chef at Glenora Wine Cellars, Veraisins, Veraisins Restaurant? Veraisins, yes. Thank you, Veraisins Restaurant. Uh, Patrick creates exceptional meals, leveraging the incredible ingredients that he has access to right in the Finger Lakes wine country. Like I had mentioned on the menu this evening is salmon, but he's going to be working with local coho salmon, as I had mentioned, is sustainably raised in the Finger Lakes region. Um, you were so kind as to create a you know, a meal for us this evening, a recipe that we're going to be working with. And it's awesome. I was, you know, in shopping for the ingredients. I really didn't need that many ingredients because it's, you know, from reading the recipe, it seems like everything's just going to be leveraging all of the phenomenal flavors um, of just great ingredients. So I definitely have a lot of questions for you on what to look for in terms of, oh, there's so many people popping in. Sorry, everyone that I'm kind of walking in and out. Um, but yes, here's how tonight is going to work. Uh, just so that it's not too distracting, I'm going to keep everyone muted and their cameras off so that the focus is mostly on Patrick and the phenomenal view from Glenora uh, wine cellars out there in the Finger Lakes wine country. And him showing us different techniques, giving us some great kitchen tips. So uh, at the end, though, I'll open it up for some questions, if you have any questions or have any comments. Um, but if, if during the process you have any questions or comments, definitely type them in the chat feature below. I am going to be moving around my own kitchen. Uh, I will be kind of the modified version of the uh, of the cooking demonstration, kind of like um, like when you're at a workout and you can't do the insane workout that they're doing, but you can do the modified version. That's what I'm going to try to be. <laughs> so yes, as they're getting a little bit more lighting, just a few more comments before we begin. Um, be sure to take photos during the process uh, or even just afterward, uh, take a photo of your of your dish and then share across social media. And then definitely, you know, because we want to see what you created. We want to see how your meal turned out. This is going to be an interactive and fun and engaging uh, cooking demonstration. Um, but yes, when you're sharing on social media, definitely use hashtag myFLX. Do at FLX Wine Country at Glenora Wine, at Local Coho, and of course, myself, at Kehlani Says. I definitely want to see what dishes you've cooked up this evening, and also all evenings. I'm just curious what y'all eaten all the time anyway. I mean, we've been, I've been trying a bunch of new recipes, so if you've got recommendations for me, definitely hit me up. Um, but yes, Let's see. I also want to give a big thank you to the Finger Lakes Wine Country for supporting this event, but also for helping to coordinate everything. Thank you so much to Local Coho for helping promote the event and getting uh, all of our participants in the room. And also, of course, thank you to Patrick and Glenora Wine Cellars for, you know, taking us on this kind of this culinary journey. Um, so I know you're a little dark there, Patrick, but uh, before we begin, I do want you to introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about, you know, tell us about yourself, tell us about uh, Glenora Wine Cellars and the restaurant and about the dish that we're going to be making tonight. All right, sure. Um, so my name, obviously, Patrick Higgins. Um, I've been in the Finger Lakes for about 14 years now. Um, I'm originally from Tampa, Florida. Uh, I worked at another hotel and restaurant for the last... 14 years before I came here in November, um, and I've been very excited to be here um, at Verations um, and work with the local farms, uh, again, which I've been doing for about 14 years, but um, it's been great here, and uh, it's been nice building a new team and uh, putting some new dishes together. Um, Lenora Winery has been here since 1977. It's the first winery on Seneca Lake in the Finger Lakes here. Um, and then Verasian's Restaurant and the hotel here have been open since 1999. 
Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you for that. And so tell us about the dish. What inspired you? What inspired this menu that we're going to be uh, making today? Um, well, when we originally started talking about it, I was trying to pick ingredients that I thought we would have in season and here um, so that I could do something that was really from from our region. Um, and the local coho is something that I really wanted to use because I'm actually uh, really attached to this product because I was the first person to ever get to cook one of their fish that came from the farm. Um, so for me, it was it's really been cool to see the operation grow and become what it is. Um, and it's also the um, to have something like that right here in the Finger Lakes, not even an hour, about an hour away from us, um, is just really incredible. And it's I believe it's the only uh, coho salmon farm in the United States as well. So, yeah, so that's very cool. Um, and uh, again, I, I just took a tour of it. They just moved to a new facility and I took a tour of it. I think last week it was of their new facility and they have an 18,000 square foot building where they're growing all these salmon. You can see it from start to finish from eggs to where the size they are now. Um, and currently I'm getting fish that are about three and a half to four pounds. Um, so they're smaller than what you see that the larger commercial fisheries use. Um, but what I really like about this is it also has a fresher taste than a lot of the other salmons do to me. Um, and that's something I really enjoy. Uh, it's also sashimi grade, so you can do raw preparations with it um, and all of that. And also in my entire career, I've never gotten fish that is as fresh as this. It literally comes to me a day after it's harvested um, fully. So I get it in and it's, the eyes are, are clear and just everything is absolutely perfect. There's no, there's no odor to it whatsoever. Um, and it's just, it's absolutely awesome. And I get to break it down from start to finish, um, which I also really enjoy. So that's, that's like the big difference between, you know, working with local coho as a sustainable farm that's also kind of nearby um, versus from other distributors. Yeah, so well, we're in the, we're kind of landlocked, so everything we get, you know, we, we get seafood, it's not, it's very, it's very rarely that caught that day, it's usually caught a day or two ahead of time, and then we get it. Um, so for me, this is a better way to give somebody a really fresh ingredient. Um, and we, we go through, um, I want to say about 30 fish a week right now that we go through and clean and do all of that with, so um, it's been great. Cool. Um, so I, it, you are still a little bit dark for us. Oh yeah, it, someone's asking, is there any way for us to light Patrick? If not, is there a way that we can swivel your setup so that, you know, as amazing as that view is behind you, it's not like you're backlighting? Because we do want to see your face. <laughs> Maybe we can go towards the back here. Yeah. Let's turn it and see if we... You can tell me if this is better. Yeah, sure. So, can you see me better here? I can, yes, that's a, that's a lot better. Thank you. Let me ask somebody to help me move the table real quick. Oh and yeah, no worries. Real fast. Okay, in the meantime, I'll go over that ingredients list that, um, that Patrick has prepared for us this evening. We're gonna have Salmon. Now, if you don't have the local coho salmon, you can work with Atlantic salmon or Scottish salmon. I have some Atlantic salmon here. Uh, sea salt to taste. We're going to be using some cracked pepper, um, oil, cooking oil, or uh, if you use any clarified butter for cooking. There's also going to be a corn custard, which will need two cups of corn kernels, which can either be fruit fresh or frozen. He says that they both work. Half a cup of uh, Chardonnay. He's going to be working with Lenora Chardonnay. Uh, two tablespoons, or is it, yeah, tablespoons, TV, <laughs> tablespoons of lemon juice. And half a teaspoon of ground coriander. Uh, and then six egg, oh, egg yolks, which I had tediously taken the egg whites out of this right before this presentation. Then for vegetables, we're going to have zucchini. This was just a great excuse for me to go out into my garden and pick some fresh zucchini. Since I'm only cooking for my husband and I, I'm just going to be altering 
uh, the recipe for, for two people instead of four people, because this is for two people. Uh, there are going to be 20 grape tomatoes or a few handfuls, whatever you got, grab them. Uh, another cup of corn kernels, two tablespoons of unsalted butter, one for the cup of Lenora Chardonnay, or Chardonnay. I know Dana's got some Chardonnay, she mentioned it in the comments, and some salt and pepper to taste. And then garnish some herbs. Now, <laughs> Patrick, you might laugh at me, and it might be a flavor bomb because when I read chopped herbs and you said you use cilantro, but parsley, basil, and chives work well, I legit just like grabbed all of them. <laughs> Um, our garden and grabbed a bunch as well so um, yeah. really whatever herbs you like work so uh, thank you so yeah that's what we're going to be working with this evening so where do we begin where do we begin with this amazing meal so the first thing we're going to do is the corn custard um i'm going to go ahead and turn my stove on here okay um, i guess so, i'll turn my stove on as well so we're going to do a double boiler so i have a small pot with a little bit of water in there Okay. Go ahead and bring that pot of water up to a boil. Okay. Put a bowl over the pot, or if you have a double boiler pot, you can use that as well. Okay. Let me fill mine up with water, but continue. Um, and then basically all those ingredients that you mentioned for the corn custard, you can just throw into a blender or a food processor and you're just going to chop them all together. Um, so, and I literally, I'm lucky here. Uh, we have a Vita prep blender. I can actually cook the custard in my Vita prep, so I don't actually have to do the double boiler. Um, so if you do have a Vita prep blender, you can actually just turn it on high, stick a thermometer in there, and watch it come up to 180 degrees. Um, and it's faster, and you don't have to sit there and really watch it, because it stirs it for you. But today, I'm going to do it right in the bowl. So like I said, I'm bringing my water up to a boil. Um, so that, that's going to be the corn custard there. And you'll see, I have my mix already here in a little pint container. Um, I, too, brought down the recipe a little bit just to do it. It's the same process whether you do it for two people or four. Um, but my ingredients are already right here. Um, and then um, while I'm waiting for my water to boil, I'm going to go ahead and cut up my zucchini, and that way I can kind of show you the size uh, sticks or batonets we're looking for. Um, there are technical specifications to the batten nets, but I hate wasting product. So I generally just try to get even cuts. Um, so I'll start with that here and I'll kind of just show you. So I cut the ends off of the zucchini first. And then for this zucchini, I'm going to cut into thirds. So I got it and in, cut into thirds here. And then I don't like the seeds for the zucchini in this because the seed area tends to uh, let a lot of water out, so it changes the texture of the zucchini a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and cut the uh, edges off, leaving most of the seeds in the side, inside there. So you're just going to cut them off and kind of square off the inside. And that's the inside, and this is what you kind of end up with with the zucchini. Um, so I'll cut that, get the other two cut real quick. I'm working on a short table here and I'm six feet tall so it's a little uh little challenging for me here <laughs> also do not watch my knife skills uh just for safety reasons I'm not like the fanciest chef also I am going to mute myself really briefly so that I can uh blend up my corn and, and catch up to you I'm just cutting my zucchini here, um, and my water is up to a boil now. So what you're looking for is just like nice stick cuts here, um, and that's what we're going to use to cook for our vegetable there. Um, I will note that uh, in the summertime, I like to use a lot of vegetables um, in the cooking, and sometimes I stay away from things like rice and starch. Uh, potatoes because they're not available right now and we don't have any rice growers uh, that I know of in New York um, and I like to celebrate the vegetables we have here um, so often I'll put straight vegetables instead of going with the typical uh, 
meal that people are used to. So if, I'm, if I'm out looking for like a zucchini, because if I've, if I've learned anything this summer, it's that I'm like Icarus. I will fly too close to the sun when it comes to like my vegetables and I want them to become the biggest and the best. And I have over ripened a lot of my vegetables. So when we're out and about at the farmer's market or at the grocery store, what are we looking for when we're getting good ingredients? I generally look for vegetables that haven't been waxed. And um, generally like anything past like 12 inches for a zucchini is usually too big for me. Um, they get woody in texture for me when they get too large. Um, so I generally will stay away from those. Um, and I try to, I don't necessarily always go for organic. I try to find the local ones first. Um, the organic for me is um, a lot of the times, a lot of our farmers here aren't certified organic. They actually grow organically. Um, so that's something I've learned that I, it's not always something that I have to follow through with in the area with, with the certified organic. Um, cool. So now we have our, I have my water boiling. I'm going to go ahead and dump my corn mixture into this bowl. And I'm just going to start stirring, hopefully not making too big of a mess. Um, and what we're going to do is you are going to keep stirring this until it gets to 180 degrees. So was that your corn? That was my corn, the wine, the eggs. Nice. Um, lemon juice, all going in that bowl. OK. And what you're doing is you're basically cooking it until it gets thick. And when it hits 180 degrees with the thermometer, it's at the actual proper temperature. Um, and that'll keep it from curdling or the eggs curdling in there. Um, oftentimes, I just kind of do it to looking because I've done it so often. Um, but if you're uncomfortable, go ahead and use that thermometer to 180 degrees. And if you do happen to go over, you can strain it through a fine mesh chinois, and that will keep it from, that'll get rid of any curds, curdling that you had in there. Um, and mine is actually almost there already. But it's really important just to kind of keep it moving. Um, all right, I am actually, there. So I don't know if you can see, but you can see basically, you can see those lines that the whip is making in that corn custard. And that tells me that it's cooked properly. And you can see how thick it's gotten from the actual cooking. Now for me, I have a little bit of corn kernel in there, so it's not 100% smooth. Um, but now the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to season with a little bit of salt and pepper. Um, the coriander was already in there for me. Um, so we're just going to season with a little bit of salt and then some cracked pepper and just stir those seasonings in. So now this can sit on the counter after that and just kind of come to room temperature. It doesn't have to be crazy hot. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that pot here. All right, so where are we at? How are you with your corn custard so far? I'm like a few moments behind you, but you can keep going. Go right ahead. Okay, so um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get my vegetables started. So I'm going to turn my heat on um, to about medium here. I'm going to throw in some of my butter. This, again, I'm using, uh, I'm going to use a little unsalted butter here. Um, for the vegetables. And you'll notice I have two different pans here and I purposely did two different colors here. Uh, so this is my regular skillet um, and then I have a non-stick skillet. Now, you don't have to cook the fish in a non-stick skillet, but I am showing you that way because you're cooking skin on fish. It tends to be a little easier for people who aren't used to cooking fish that way. Um, so I'm gonna get this pan nice and hot with that, with that butter in there. Swirl that around. And then you're going to go ahead and throw your tomatoes right in that pan. And you'll hear them sizzle a little bit. 
Oh, I do see some questions though. There's um, someone had asked, what do we blend the corn with, blender or food processor? Did you, What were your recommendations? Either one is fine. If you use a blender, you're gonna get a finer chop and it'll be more smooth. It'll be more smooth. So my tomatoes are starting to blister already. So I'm not sure if you can see it in here, but you can see the color. So I'll pull one out here. You're not trying to get black, but what you're trying to do is get this like orangish color here. And you don't have to cut those. They're just whole, right? Doing whole, yep. Yeah. But you're going to get that uh, that orange color to them, and that's the blistering of the skin. Um, if you're not comfortable spinning it like I am, use a spoon by all means. Um, and we're just trying to get a nice even blister all over them. And once they're blistered, you're going to go ahead and throw your zucchini in there. Your cut zucchini. And then we're just going to go ahead and give it another stir or a spin or a flip here. Now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and season with a little bit of salt. And a little bit of pepper. All right. Now, while that is going, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my other skillet for the salmon. And we're going to start the skillet for the salmon on high. Then we're going to add our, our, uns, our uh, clarified butter in there. Um, real quick a note, so here's my salmon filet. Again, this is about a six ounce salmon filet that I'm cooking. Um, and we are going to season it just with salt. Um, I always, whenever I'm cooking meats, I tend to go with pepper at the end. Uh, pepper will usually burn in a hot pan. So I always, I always go with it at the end of the meal, at the end of the dish rather than the beginning. So we're gonna season with both sides with salt. We are gonna go ahead now, my pan is nice and hot. We're gonna go ahead and throw in a couple tablespoons of butter here clarified butter and let that melt. Um, real quick on my vegetables, they're starting to brown. So I am gonna go ahead and add my white wine. Um, if you are working with a gas stove, I suggest you pull the pan off and hit it with that wine. Just to make sure that you don't get any igniting or flame. And then you put it back on there. We're gonna go ahead and throw our corn kernels in. Give them a nice little spin. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn my stove off because it's running pretty hot. Um, and I'm also just gonna give myself a little taste real quick of the zucchini. So I'm seasoned pretty well. I'm just gonna give it a little bit more pepper. Now that part can stay in that hot pan and it's gonna stay hot for you for a second. You'll see here, I'm starting to smoke on my pan. I'm gonna go ahead, turn that off for a second just so I don't ignite again. So that pan is nice and hot. I'm gonna take my seasoned salmon and I'm gonna put it down skin side down in that pan. Which pan was for wine? Was that the vegetables or for the salmon? The wine goes in the vegetables. All right. So I'm glaze right there. So now my pan was on high. I'm gonna lower my pan to about medium heat. Um, and something that when you're cooking salmon skin on, some people like to slip the skin. I like to just leave it whole so it doesn't overcook the fish. And when I'm cooking, uh, teaching um, chefs how to do this, I oftentimes tell them to use a gloved hand. And if you actually use your, the backs of your fingers and press down lightly on the fish, you can hear, you can feel a popping on the skin. And that's the skin actually crisping up. Now, alternatively, you can do it with your fish fat as well if you're a little nervous and you'll feel the popping through the fish fat, the fish and fat. You said the salmon skin side down. Skin side down, yes. 
So right now I'm cooking my fish. I'm just giving it a light. I'm giving it a very light push down. Because as soon as you put it, the salmon in the pan, it's going to kind of curl up. And um, you, it's not going to get crisp if you just leave it alone. So you've got to press it down a little bit. But I'm very gentle with that pressing. And again, you can feel the popping through that spatula there. Ooh, it already smells so good. Yeah, I love this dish because it's not complicated, but it's very fresh tasting. Um, and for me, it's a very, it's very much summer here in New York. Like all the ingredients are very uh, indicative of what we get a lot of here during the summer. And I look forward to this season every year when I start seeing these vegetables, because after a long, hard winter, you get tired of cooking uh, winter squash and things, things like of that nature. So it's nice to get these fresh vegetables in. So again, I'm using my, the back to my fingers. If you're uncomfortable doing that, by all means, use your fish spatula. Um, a good way to tell about your fish when that skin is, is crisp is you're not gonna feel that popping anymore. And usually when you see the salmon filet getting cooked about halfway up the top, you're usually pretty good to flip to get that crispy skin sound. So again, I'm just gonna let this go. I have this on medium heat and I'm getting a little bit of wind here on my butane burner. So um, it's slowing me down a little bit. Um, um, if you are working with an electric stove, um, sometimes they turn themselves on and off, so you're going to have to monitor your heat a little bit differently. So at this point, I am almost ready to flip my salmon. Again, my salmon is in a really huge, thick fillet, um, so it'll crisp up a little fa faster than a typical Scottish or uh, Atlantic salmon. So what we're going to do next is I'm going to take my fish spatula, go underneath, and I'm just going to show you real quick um, how crisp, you can see the crisp on my salmon skin right here. That nice golden brown, and you can actually see where I missed that crisp a little bit. So I'm going to put it back in the pan real quick just to get that area of the skin. Here's where I am so far. I think I'm doing okay. I'm still not at that halfway point, but I'm getting there. Yeah, just keep Keep patient and cooking fish skin on takes a little bit of practice as well. So if it's not perfect the first time, keep going after it. Um, salmon's actually probably the best fish to start with. It's the easiest one to crisp the skin on. Um, so it's good. So now at this point, I got that other side crispy. I'm gonna turn off my pan. I am gonna flip my salmon. I'm gonna count to 30 and I'm gonna pull it off. Uh, so. All right, so now here, I'm just gonna show you, you can see all of my salmon skin is crispy. And as you run your finger, it almost feels like you're going over a board or something. That's kind of the way to know you've got it done right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that aside. And I'm, gonna, I'm already ready to plate. So I'm gonna go ahead and plate. Um, and then if you have any questions, by all means ask as we go through. So um, for this dish, I like to use a darker plate. So I have um, one of our slate plates here. Um, I'm going to use a spoon here. I'm going to take that corn custard, give it a little stir. I'm going to set it right on the plate here. So I got a little ball. And then I just take the spoon and I'm going to give it a little drag. Okay. So there's my, there's the initial part there. A little trick to make a regular meal at home really fancy. I like that technique. Yeah, it's a super easy uh, way to kind of do that. Um, then I'm going to use my tongs here, um, and I'm going to take, so I'm doing one plate, so we're going to do five great tomatoes here. And 
and I'll do my best to kind of show you here as I go without messing up my plating. But what I do is you see that drag, and nobody's going to eat this, so I'm going to use my hands just so it holds on. But you want to leave that drag so you can see this part out because it kind of helps with the presentation. So you're going to plate at the end of the drag and not the beginning of the, the spoon drag there. So there go our tomatoes. Next, we're going to go ahead and take our zucchini that's cooked. And we're going to place it right over and on top of those tomatoes. Okay, and then I'm going to take some corn here. I'm just going to use a spoon for the corn. And I like to put a little bit of the corn kernels on the front of that drag there. All righty, and then we're going to grab some more of those corn kernels. Put them over the top of some of the zucchini there. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and take our fish and place it right there. So again, as you look at this, you see I still maintain my drag. Drag there, sorry, it's falling a little bit, but I'm trying to tilt it so you can see. <clears throat> so I'm maintaining my drag there. Then what I do is I have my fresh herbs. So what I have here, as you'll see, I have some purple flowers, some white flowers. So this is some of my herbs that actually flowered a little bit that I'm going to use to garnish. So this is a cilantro flower. Um, and then I have some leaves as well. And I'm just going to basically tear. And put oh, so I didn't realize that you could use the flower because this is the time of year, like my, some of my herbs are beginning to flower. And I like seed keeping, so I'm going to keep those seeds for next year. But what, what's a little bit of the difference? What, uh, what's the difference between the herb itself and... You know, and the flour, is there a flavor profile? For me, they taste the same. It's just, uh, it adds to the presentation because you get a little bit of color. So I have some thyme flowers that are actually really pretty and purple here. So it tastes just like the thyme, but it adds like an extra layer of color to the dish. Um, and that's kind of why I like to use them. I'm not a huge fan of putting things like orchids on my plates and all of that kind of stuff. I'd rather use what my garden has to offer. Um, we're also very lucky up here because we have a ton of wildflowers that are all edible. Actually, growing right on our property, we have a ton. So we'll sometimes use those as well. All right. And then the very last thing here is little secret thing for a garnish is I have some paprika oil here. So for me, we make this in batches just to add splashes of color. So this is um, two cups of olive oil or canola oil, whichever you prefer, with a half a cup of paprika in it. And you bring, get the oil hot, and then you add the paprika, and uh, it'll bubble a little bit. And then you set it off to the counter, let it steep. All the paprika will actually fall to the bottom of the pan, and you pour it off, and you get this nice red oil. Um, so that I put right in the spoon drag there, um, and it adds a nice little flavor to the corn as well. And here is our finished dish. So I'm not sure if you can see it. That is gorgeous though, yes. I'm like a few steps behind you. I'm like trying to plate now, but yeah, that's gorgeous. How's everyone else's looking? Did anyone else um, cook along with us? Let us know in the comments. Um, and if you'd like, you can hit it with a little cracked pepper at the end. Um, for me, just a little bit. I don't think the dish needs a whole lot. Um, but you've ended up with a beautiful dish. Presents well, very colorful. Um, and for me, it tastes great. So it's one of my favorite dishes that we've got here right now. And I actually have this dish on our menu right now as well. Oh, awesome. This is, this has been so, so fun. Um, does anyone have any questions? I can open it up to the floor now. Let's see what some of the comments are. Mine's looking good. Not the same, but still good. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in the same boat. Uh, mine looks good. I'm excited to share it with my husband. I know he's kind of like lurking in the distance, wondering where dinner is at. Um, starting everything now, but the custard turned out perfect. Oh, nice, Gio. Definitely, like, share that custard on 
on uh, Instagram, Twitter. I definitely want to see how your custard turned out because mine is meh. I don't know. I might have to give custard another try. Uh, we were lucky to have dinner made by Patrick last Saturday. Absolutely delicious. Oh, thanks, Janet. Very cool. Uh, oh, yeah, the paprika oil. That was a nice touch. I wish I had that too. And yeah, can't wait. Kathleen says, can't wait to visit later this year. Um, well, that was a lot of fun. And, you know, I've been asking everyone um, that I've done these presentations with uh, in the Finger Lakes wine country, I've been asking them, you know, what's one thing that you want people to take away from their uh, Finger Lakes wine country experience? Um, for me, I think just take a look at all the beauty around us and we also have an incredible amount of like hardworking farmers here um, that really produce really wonderful things. Um, and not only we have the lakes, the beauty of all of this, but um, our winemakers in the region, our farmers, we have a group of passionate people. These are not factory farms. These are people who care about everything they do. Um, the cheeseries we have up here are incredible. Um, just, and there's just so much, the butcher shops, that some areas have, the people growing the meat. Um, I, I used to work with a, a pig farmer um, and the way he absolutely loved his pigs um, that he raised, it, it was really just something that is, is just awesome. And if you talk to our winemaker, Steve, or any other winemaker in the region, they, they are so passionate about what they do and they are constantly trying to learn um, and do better and you know keep growing as wineries, winemakers, and all of that. And I think that that's what's really great about the region. And in the time I've been here in 14 years, what I have seen happen to the area is just incredible. When I started, there weren't a whole lot of great restaurants. There weren't a whole lot of, um, and this might've been my experience with, with the wines in the area weren't nearly as good as they are now. Um, but I think every winery has stepped it up and really they're all doing incredible things. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, definitely the you know, that passion clearly shines through in just the excellence of the wine and of course of the food. And it just, it's a culinary playground. I love going up there. Um, I've been going up now for a few years now um, and during different seasons, every season is just a different experience to be had. Um, yeah, definitely. I know as a chef, you must really love playing with the seasonality of things. Yeah, and there's just, believe it or not, too, there's so much here that uh, is wild that you can actually eat in the area as well. Oh, uh, wow. from Mushrooms and herbs, and we have, uh, there's lamb's quarter growing, and right, actually, actually, we have lamb's quarter growing out in our side yard here, which is like a wild spinach, and these things are all kind of just growing here um, and ready to be taken if you know what they are so um, that's incredible yeah the area is the area is great and I like I've been from Tampa Florida I never want to go back to Tampa Florida so <laughs> I'm happy being here oh well thank you so much for your time this has been really wonderful I am so excited to dig into this meal and I know for anyone who has had cooked with us um, I won't keep you waiting from your dinner so thank you so much Patrick it's been such a true pleasure thank you for you know preparing the menu for us and for walking us through and I definitely learned a lot this evening so thank you and of course thank you to Lenora Winery thank you to local Coho and thank you again to the Finger Lakes Wine Country for helping this helping put this together this was a lot of fun I've been looking forward to this all week <laughs> Good. Well, thank you so much for having us, too. It was my pleasure. I hope maybe we can do it again sometime. All right. Well, bon appetit. Good evening, everyone.